hello everyone and welcome to my youtube channel if you're new here please don't forget to like share and subscribe today we're going to discuss about the interim guidelines for assessment and grading in light of the basic education learning continuity plan or the deped order number 31 series of 2020 my name is frankie and this topic is included on the special topics for assessment in learning one and assessment in learning two in this session, uh, we're going to cover the following. First, the rationale and scope of the interim guidelines, the definition of terms, and the last one is the policy statement. There are other uh, topics to be discussed, but it will be discussed in the next video. So, the continuing threat of COVID-19 in the country and the world brings about unprecedented challenges to basic education. As schools prepare for SY 2020 to 2021, teachers and parents must adopt to alternative learning modalities to ensure that learners achieve essential curricular goals. This will require creative and innovative ways of designing optimal learning experiences and assessing learning progress effectively under adverse circumstances. As stated in Deped Order Number 8 Series of 2015, the policy guidelines in classroom assessment for the K-12 basic education program, assessment should be used to inform and improve classroom practices and promote learning outcomes. However, in distance or blended learning environments, it is necessary to utilize alternative tools and strategies for assessing and supporting learning, while avoiding creating undue pressure on the teacher, learners, and their families. So basically, the purpose of these um, interim guidelines is to provide specific um, rules on how to administer tests on, or on what to select when it comes to assessing our students' performances because the pandemic had provided a different learning environment for our learners. It is just deemed necessary that teachers at the same time specifically the the department of education needs to redesign their assessments to match the demands of the current situation so because of that uh, these interim guidelines was um, crafted in order to support of course our uh, primary clients in the teaching and learning process which are the learners as to its scope, the Dep Ed order provides for the entering policy guidelines for assessment and grading in light of the basic education learning continuity plan that will be implemented by public elementary and secondary schools nationwide for school year 2020-2021. So the interim guidelines also allows private schools, technical and vocational, in vocational institutions, and higher education institutions including state and local universities and colleges who are offering the K-12 basic education program to implement these interim guidelines. But of course, a private schools and institutions are permitted to modify these policy guidelines according to their own respective philosophies, visions, and missions with the approval of their respective Dep and regional offices. So, in these interim guidelines, the following terms were operationally defined to match what was uh, made, which is the in the guidelines on how to perform specific assessment tasks and assessment policies in the pandemic. So the first one is classroom assessment. So classroom assessment is an ongoing process of identifying, gathering, organizing, and interpreting quantitative and qualitative information about what learners know and can do. So holistically, the classroom assessment is composed of various assessments that the teachers do and perform in order to collate data at the same time, um, mark or grade students' performances, be it written works or performance, performance tasks. So everything that the teacher is doing for the class is uh, called classroom assessment. This involves everything that the teachers do, be it formative or summative assessment. The next one is uh, formative assessment. So it is a process that involves 
teachers using evidence about what learners know and can do to inform and improve their teaching. So basically, the purpose of formative assessment is to inform teachers about the quality of their teaching strategies. So if the result of the formative assessment is not that good, so teachers are guided to redesign or at the same time or improve their own teaching strategies for them to provide and implement at the same time, give the students uh, the learning experiences uh, that they deserve. So this process through teachers' immediate feedback in enables students to take responsibility for their own learning and identify areas where they do well and where they need help. So because of the formative assessments, of course, these are non-recorded assessments, uh, that learners were able to know their own strengths and weaknesses, not only the teachers, but at the same time, they will be, you will be able to identify the specific areas of concern for a particular lesson. So this is what formative assessments do. They help teachers, they help students to improve their own respective strengths and weaknesses. So for the case of the teachers, the teacher will be able to improve his or her respective teaching strategy. On the other hand, the learners will be able to know and improve also their performances on a specific learning content where they have performed poorly. The next one is summative assessment. So summative assessment is an assessment that is usually administered toward the end of a learning period to measure the extent to which the learners have mastered the essential learning competencies, the results of which are recorded and are used to report the learner's achievement. So that's why for the DepEd, we have the so-called uh, quarterly assessments, um, long quizzes at the same time, those uh, assessments that are recorded. So the purpose of this kind of assessment is for grading, marking, and determining the progress or level of a particular learner. Uh, the, the type of test that falls with summative assessments are used to determine whether um, there is progress in the learning of the students or have they met or have they uh, have, have they been able to reach the required level of proficiency or mastery um, of that particular grade level or subject area. So these uh, assessments are recorded, of course, for the purpose of marking and at the same time, of course, for progress report. We also have grading. So grading is the way of reporting assessments, assessment data by assigning a value to results as a record of students' ability, achievement, or progress. So this is evident for the records that the progress report cards that are being used uh, in the Department of Education. So that's the way we report our assessment data. So for the cases of grades, there are specific transmutation tables. At the same time, there is a, there is a corresponding value for a particular level of grades reached. For instance, uh, what is the equivalent of excellent or what particular grades? So there is a corresponding value for each of those. So those are for the purpose of grading. So those are the definition of terms, uh, terms that are very important, especially in discussing uh, the procedures or the specific policies to be implemented in the assessment processes of the Department of Education. So the DepEd is committed to ensure educational continuity in this time of crisis while looking after the health, safety, and well-being of all its learners teachers, and personnel. So schools must adopt assessment and grading practices that can most meaningfully support student development and respond to varied contexts uh, context at this time. So basically, these interim guidelines uh, was uh, made in order to assist not only the teachers but also the learners to be able to craft a specific assessment strategies and assessment tasks that would help at the same time match the current scenario. So in that way, they will, be not, they will not be too pressured or at the same time, they will not feel too, they will not feel that they were left behind uh, because of the difficulty of answering a specific learning task. So 
these uh, guidelines uh, was made in order for uh, the teachers and learners be to be able to have a great learning experience even in the middle of the pandemic. So the policy statement is grounded on the following specific principles. So the first one is assessment should be holistic and authentic in capturing the attainment of most essential learning competencies. So the prescribed competencies per grade level and per content area was lessened and was identified into most essential learning competencies, meaning these are the competencies that are really required and necessary, necessary in order for the learners to learn and gain the most important components of the teaching and learning content. So assessment should be holistic, holistic and authentic uh, and to measure the respective required learning competencies. The second one is assessment is integral for understanding student learning and development. So to be able to fully understand the learner, we need to provide specific assessment tasks, be it performance tasks or written work, that could really help us understand how the learners think, uh, how they develop their learning. So it's not just about grading, it's not just about marking or recording the grades that they have achieved, but also uh, getting something from these grades, getting something from these marks that would help us in our future decision making. So number three is a variety of assessment strategies is necessary with formative assessment taking priority to inform teaching and promote growth and mastery. So of course, there is no single best assessment strategy. That's why it is necessary for teachers to use various assessment strategies, ass assessment techniques, tools, performance tasks, written tasks, whenever or whatever is suited to the, to the target uh, most essential learning competencies. Uh, the teacher should not use uh, one assessment strategy only across the different most essential learning competencies. The teacher should be flexible if in case there are some concerns in the task or assessment task that is not suited uh, to a particular learner. That's why a variety of assessment tasks and assessment strategies should be available or made available for teachers. That's why teachers need to upgrade themselves in order for them to create and to redesign assessment tasks for their students. Number four, assessment and feedback should be shared, should be a shared responsibility among teachers, learners, and their families. Of course, uh, in this time of pandemic, um, teachers are not the only one who, who, who are teaching their uh, learners or their students. Right now, parents also serve as teachers for their children. So the feedback, the way it was, uh, we assess our learners should be a shared responsibility. So parents should uh, inculcate to their uh, children integrity and honesty while answering their task, written task, or doing their own performance task uh, to be able to get and to be able to attain really the learning outcomes and the most essential learning competencies targeted by the Department of Education with objectivity. And number five, assessment and grading should have a positive impact on learning. So though this is not necessarily the case all, all the time, but we always wanted to consider and to get the best out of the assessment task or assessment results that we have, be it a low or high result, we wanted to get the best out of it. And it could be used in future decision making that could improve our own respective assessment strategies and assessment techniques. So in the future, we will be able to create or provide learning opportunities to our learners uh, considering our own respective experiences from our previous students. So teachers, uh, school leaders, learners, and parents must commit to uphold the integrity of learning and instruction in the context of distance education. So the main desired outcomes of this policy are to ensure that all learners are fairly assessed and graded in the continuation of education during this health crisis. So 
the main goal of these guidelines is to fairly evaluate or assess the students. So regardless whether you are poor or rich, um, this policy was crafted to ensure that everything is fairly drafted. And also to emphasize that learning standards shall be attained with the provision of reasonable leniency and considerations for possible difficulties met by the learners. So even though we wanted to aim for quality, of course, still there are some cases that we really need to give or provide consideration for students who, who cannot be able to submit on time or to be able to submit the task uh, with a greater quality because of some circumstances. So we need to be lenient or extend our patience when dealing with the submissions of our learners. So for this time, we're just going to consider these um, parts and we're going to discuss deeper in the remaining components of the interim guidelines in the succeeding video. Again, uh, thank you so much for paying attention and listening and I greatly appreciate your time. Again, if you have not subscribed to my channel, please don't forget to subscribe, like, share, and comment your thoughts here in this video. Thank you and have a great day.